Well hi and firstly um, a warm welcome to this my first ever YouTube video. Um, I hope to introduce myself, my name is Martin Phillips, I'm actually a filmmaker based here in South Wales in the UK. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be a full-time filmmaker for the last 12 years or so. Um, and I do various things, I film weddings, although a smaller number now. Uh, I do a lot of corporate filming uh, for other production companies, uh, shows, uh, video channels, all sorts of stuff. So, uh, really lucky, I love my job, it's a fantastic industry to be in. Why the channel? Well, um, it's probably my son actually initially kept saying, Dad, you should do a, a video channel. You get to work with so much nice gear and uh, you get to do some pretty mad things um, or an exciting things that you should really try and share some of that. People will be interested. And so I thought, well, why not? Let's have a, let's have a go at it. And I'm sure you'll tell me whether it's any good or not, as YouTube does. Uh, so please do give some feedback, guidance. And the main reason for this first video really is to share with you my journey and maybe give you some tips, particularly around if you're interested in getting solar, because it's something that I've just done. And uh, you know, I've learned a lot over the last few months having researched it. Why did I have solar? Well, firstly, I need to go back a bit because I've got a real interest in electric cars. The idea of having a car that runs off a battery to me is just intriguing. I just, it's something I really want to do. Um, I'm just waiting for the right time. And as I started thinking about that, started looking into different electric vehicles, the idea of them being able to charge those vehicles when either the electricity is cheap during the evening or even better from the sun and driving around for free uh, was something that really excited me and I started looking into it. So I thought the first stage really was for me to get solar. And in the UK, there's a feed-in tariff, which is an incentive, which over the last few years has was dropped down level, 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 and has now disappeared. But I just managed to get in before the lowest rate disappeared at the end of March. So I managed to get in on that before that finished, um, which was a bit of a bonus. But I've got to say, I still think, you know, there's some real good reasons for doing solar, even without the feed-in tariff. One, because just generating your own electricity and not being reliant on the grid is a really good feeling to have and two you know it is definitely better for the environment there's no doubt about that creating your own energy is a good thing the more people that can do it the better so the first thing i would say is that um you've got to speak to a lot of companies uh, i spoke to about six companies four of which visited us um, the industry is it's quite weird in that it, it's got a real double glazing sort of feel to it. I don't think it should have, but it has. Um, I think that's part of the process because there were loads of companies that were selling when the first tariff came out and people were getting paid 45 pence um, for exporting back to the, to the grid or for creating really. Um, it, you know, loads of companies sprung up and, and it all got a bit sort of hard sellish. There were companies selling, installing panels for free and just having a tariff and you had the benefit of electricity, etc, etc. So, um, what it's left with now is a few companies and they really range in sort of quality of them. Some of them extremely good, very knowledgeable, others just it's almost like a, a double glazing sort of process. And that's no disrespect to double glazing salespeople by the way, uh, but you know what I mean. It's that sort of, you know, really sort of tacky uh, sales process driven, um, commission driven sort of business I feel. Uh, and we had a whole range of that. I had one company uh, who didn't even bother to contact me back. I mean, you know, I explained I was definitely going to be buying solar and was looking for the right company to, to use. Didn't even bother to call back. Uh, and I'd spoken to somebody at their office. Um, uh, other companies sent people round, who, quite frankly, you wouldn't even want in your house. Um, and eventually there, were, there was one company that stood out and that was Evergreen, uh, based in Bristol, I think it is, just over the, over the bridge from us. Um, they were excellent. The guy on the phone was very knowledgeable, but they were so busy with the removal of the feed-in tariff that uh, they said they wouldn't actually be able to install my system, but they would outsource that to another company, but I'd still be a customer of theirs. So that's what actually happened. Um, I went through them, their, their guy Rob came around to the house and he was awesome. Wasn't a hard sell person at all, but was just really knowledgeable, understood the ins and outs of solar. Um, you know, wanted to know, really wanted to know what I wanted to get from it. And that was an important thing that most companies didn't do. 
Um, some of them didn't even ask questions of, about, you know, well, what are you looking to get it? They just sort of tried to bombard you with all these astronomical figures that you'd be saving, most of which are, you know, really exaggerated. Um, you know, and I didn't really need any of that. And I told them I didn't need that because I already knew the sort of case for doing it. Um, it was more about talking about what I wanted to do because I wanted to do something slightly unusual. Anyway, Evergreen, brilliant, well worth looking up if you're looking for it. Um, I think there's still huge benefits to doing solar now, even though there's no feed-in tariff. You know, you can still benefit a, an awful lot from the savings, uh, particularly if you go for a battery install, which I haven't got yet. The company came, installed. You can see a little bit of time-lapse video of the panels going up. Um, I've actually, let me tell you a little bit about the, the system that I've got and why I went for it. Normally, and a few of the companies that came to see us would just say, oh, well, it's, uh, you know, you have to have a four kilowatt system uh, because that's what you can have without getting additional permission from like Western Power or Western Distribution or something. Um, uh, and they would, you know, even though I didn't want that, they would just sort of, that's the quote, you know, that's, that's what you're having, uh, which sort of irritated me a bit. But anyway, um, I went for a bigger, panel array because my view was having researched it that particularly in the UK the weather's not great it's beautiful at the moment but it's not great all of the time we get a lot of cloudy days and if I had purchased a four kilowatt system then uh, on a cloudy day that might produce one and a half to two kilowatts where a 5.3 5.53 kilowatt system which is what I've got on that same day could produce two and a half to three kilowatts let's say so there's a real benefit there on the cloudy days, which in the UK is the majority of the time. So that's why I went for a bigger system. A, a solar system consists of several parts. The panels, obviously the most obvious part, and they sit on the roof of your house um, or wherever. Uh, they then bring that power into what we call an inverter. And um, the, the inverter is there because the solar panels produce DC direct current. Your house needs AC alternating current. So the inverter is the magic box that does that conversion. And the one I've gone for is a solar edge one, which I looked into and seemed to be the best one for me. Um, and that sits up in the attic and ticks away, converting the solar power into power that we can use in the house. Each panel's got a little optimizer um, on the back of it, which means that even if one panel is underperforming, the rest will perform as they should be. So if one goes into the shade, it doesn't matter, the rest will still produce the, the maximum they can in the light they've got. It also means I can monitor each panel as well to see that they're all working, which is important as well. So that's the system I've got. We'll have a little look now at the monitoring of it. And there's a fantastic app on your iPhone to look at it. You can look at it on a PC as well, but to be honest with you, you've got your phone with you all the time. I can look at it anywhere I want to, just to see what the system is doing. But I'll run through that little bit of software now. Okay, so here's the Solar Edge app. We'll just launch that and straight away it goes to the dashboard. Um, on the top you can see home address details and then you can also see the total power that the solar array produces, 5.53 kilowatts. A little bit on the weather there on the right hand side at the top panel. And if you touch on that, it does take you to a bit more details of the weather and also the forecast for the days ahead. Just underneath then is the current power output of the system. So it's a 5.53 kilowatt array, but it's actually right now producing 3.67 kilowatts. It's a reasonably cloudy day uh, here in South Wales today. Um, just below there, you can see a, a summary uh, which shows today's total production, which is 2.87 kilowatts so far, and it's uh, currently 10 past 10. Um, so far for the month, we produced 574 kilowatts and for the lifetime of the uh, array, which was the end of March, beginning of April, um, 2.64 megawatts has been produced. Just underneath there is a bit more detail of, uh, of the day. Uh, this is today here, the 26th of July. Um, and you can see that the systems produced 2.87, which sort of matches the, the figure above. And you show, it shows you the production as we go through the day on a sort of time graph. If you go to yesterday's, you can see a much better picture there of a full day. Um, the system started producing from just before 7.30 and finished at just about eight o'clock last night. So, and produced 29.93 kilowatts for the day. So 30 kilowatt day, which is pretty good. And as we go back, you can see 25.78. You can also uh, just touch the, um, the date calendar and that will actually let you just scroll through whichever date you want to pick um, and go straight to that day. So that's pretty useful, or you can just flick back through. 
Um, you can also then just slightly above here, switch that to a week view, so it'll show you the, the current week. Um, it, it'll also show you a, a month view, so for the whole of the month so far, uh, and then a, a full year's view as well. And you can see we started just at, uh, towards the end of March. Um, down below there, you can get more data than this actually. You can uh, also buy a mod bus for this, which gives you then details of um, your export to the grid and the consumption that you're using from the grid, but I don't have that, sadly. Um, and just below there is a comparative, uh, comparative energy, but obviously it's mine is just showing what we're producing. If you did have the mod bus, it would show you all those other data there. Um, and then also at the very bottom, you've got um, you know, you're sort of estimated what you've saved as far as, uh, you know, CO2 emissions, just over a thousand kilograms and um, three trees, I think it is, three, three and a half trees. So at the very bottom, you can see on the right hand side, this sort of grid diagram. If you hit that, it actually takes you to a layout of the panels themselves. And you can zoom in, pinch and zoom in, and you can see what each panel is producing. Um, now, one of the reasons why some of them there, if you look at the main roof, are producing less, the one in the middle there, five point, that might be that there's bird crap on there, or it might be that there's a bit of cloud actually, you know, just stopping the sun hitting that panel as strongly. This is one of the benefits of the optimized system, in that each of those is running independently. So even though that middle panel is down at 158, it's not affecting any other panels at all. And then you look at the three on the uh, on the extension roof, and we actually knew that one on the right was never going to be as uh, strong as the rest. Um, and then you've also got the inverter there, um, which shows you what that's currently producing right now. You can change the time scale for this and show what the totals are for the week, um, and you can also show it for the month, the year, and the, the grand total. So. There we go, they pretty much evened out there if you look, all around the sort of 157, 158 mark. Uh, and you can see that one on the right hand side in the extension is a little bit lower than the rest. So that's pretty good. And then you can come out of that any time just by pressing the, the at the very bottom, the one on the left. So that hits, it takes you back to the um, sort of desktop view if you like. Really good app to have a look at. And you can look at this anywhere, obviously it links via the internet to the, to the inverter in the attic. So that's it, top tips before I go. Um, a few things really, firstly the equipment then. So the panels we went for um, are 325 watt panels. Um, and in my view, that's important. You need to produce as much power, as much energy from the panels that you can. Particularly if down the road you're thinking of installing a battery or you have an electric vehicle, the more power you can get off the roof, the better. So 325 was the highest that we could get. So the 17 panels that I've got produce 5.53. Um, the optimization on the back of each panel, I think is a really good top tip. Now that makes a huge difference on what you're able to monitor, but also what you're able to produce. You know, if you have a faulty panel, it's not gonna have as big an impact on you as if, it, if you were in a string formation. So that was important. The inverter solar edge, uh, excellent you know, quality inverter. Um, and you know, really good monitoring system off the back of it. The other thing I would also mention is guarantees. Guarantees on solar varies a huge amount, so um, do look into that because you know you can get some companies that will guarantee your inverter for 10 years, some will guarantee it for 20 years, some will guarantee the panels for 10 years or 20 years, so look into that. Um, the other top tip, of course, is which companies to use. Um, you need to make your own decision on that, you know, I've mentioned the ones that I used and they were very good. Um, but I would definitely recommend that you, you know, you call around, you get at least four or five people to come and see you to talk it through. Um, do the research beforehand so you're ready with the questions that you need to ask them. And that way I think you'll find a company that will hopefully suit you best and, and get you the panel and the system that you want um, installed. So other than that, I think that's probably about it for now, but I would say that, um, you know, I hope you've liked the first episode. Uh, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments or thumbs up or all of whatever you do. Um, and also, I guess the next part of the story for me is maybe to share with you some analysis on the production from the panel once I get a few months worth of data through for that. So I'll certainly do that. Um, and of course, uh, where I get on with, uh, with buying an electric vehicle, maybe if I do a few test drives, I'll 
create films for that so I can share my thoughts with you on those vehicles as well. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching and uh, see you again soon.